Thank you for watching this VMware Resilience with HPE three-part demonstration. At high level, this is how the infrastructure layout should be architect. This consists of VMware stretch cluster and two three parts with peer persistency across two data centers with multiple paths. Three parts with multiple paths support the IOPS migration from primary to the secondary on a transparent automatic failover fashion. Here's some three part reading content. For this demonstration, LAN 55 is associated with target numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5, where targets 2 and 3 are the secondary, a 3 par 7450, and targets 4 and 5 for the primary, 3 par 8440. Let's take a look at the 3 par setup. Here's the overview of the 3 pars. And looking at the WWN, it is critical that both three parts present the same WWN. Remote copy groups in this environment have two links between the three parts with matching OS version. Here you can see a better representation of the link with port numbers and IP addresses. We do a quick edit, additional information. And this is the link configuration. Let's navigate to remote copy groups and check on configuration members, writable LANs, and target system. In the volume pairs, you can see that source volume 3 par remote copy VV01 is synced with a 3 par RC vv01.r Focusing on host ESX05 LAN55 This is the vCenter path details You can see 8 path total four are active and four are on standby. Why on this view notice the runtime names target two, three, four, and five. Targets four and five are active on HPA zero and 64. All others are on standby. The data store three par RC VV01 is the storage used for this demo for the virtual machine name ubnt 2 Using VMware Remote Console, we will access this guest VM and later on on this demo set it up to execute some performance and availability tests while the primary 3 par fails over to the secondary 3 par. These tests will show IOPS performance and network availability for a virtual machine residing on a failed over LAN. This near real-time script captures the path state using ESX CLI on the host. The script queries the host every 5 seconds for path state and sort results by runtime name. Let's check on LAN path information from vCenter and compare with the PowerCLI output. Here, 
you can see the same runtime name between vCenter and PowerCLI script. The following color is applied, red for dead, blue for standby, and green for active. While I have the remote console open, let's start some continuous ping to 8.8.8 .8 and let it run. With ICMP tests already running, let's pre-configure the IOPS benchmark on the guest VM and get it ready to run for when we shut down the interfaces. To force a three-part failure, we will need to make it unreachable. So the network interfaces to remote copy and management network will be shut down. I have the interfaces already selected. Let's start the disk performance benchmark. Enter my password, and as soon as I click start, I will shut down the interfaces. And here it goes. Path goes dead for a few seconds, and soon runtime name targets 2 and 3 will be the active. And that took just a few seconds. Let's take a look at the guest. From this screen, we can quickly identify no packet loss from remote to guest. The disk benchmark illustrates the timing of the failover with no impact to the guest. That is no packet loss from the guest to the internet either. Notice in the lower right corner that the 3 par 8440 is no longer responding. Taking a deeper look into the continuous ping window from workstation to guest, that there is no packet loss related to this failover exercise. With the switch ports already reconfigured to enable, let's take a look on current remote copy group status while we wait for the 3 par 8440 to become responsive. Now that the 3 par 8440 starts to respond, Please notice the state changes. Also notice that no ESXi path updates will occur until 3 par volume group switchovers is executed. First, we will recover remote copy volume group then we will update the replication direction and finally switch over. Let's start with recover. Please notice this will synchronize the delta changes.
Yes, recover. You will notice the status changes first. Looking at the state description, you also will notice that shortly three part detects a reverse replication direction. For that, we will need to SSH into the fail over secondary tree part and reverse that back via command line. To keep this demonstration simple, I will get the remote copy virtual volume name from the activity log. Execute the command line on my PuTTY section. And expect a task ID. Let's go back to our virtual volume groups overview. And you can see state changes taking place. Expect no ESXi path updates until the three par volume groups switch over. As last step to return to original state, let's execute the switchover. Let's check the paths one more time on vCenter. Refresh. Expand the paths. Sort by status. Resize columns. Please notice runtime name targets two and three are active and the target names. And now I will click yes, switch over. And the paths are switching to the original state. Let's watch and observe the state changes. One more state changing. Let's verify target system name and writable LAN. Back to vCenter, refresh, and let's verify the path. Sort by status, notice the target name and runtime names. As you can see here, targets five and four are again the active paths. Thank you for watching this demonstration.